Well, I'm Lewis, uh, this is my dog Scruff, he's a legend. The wee bit about me is I put videos up online highlighting my Tourette syndrome. Started my YouTube channel because there was a girl singing in Bangor bus station and <laughs> I just wanted to check it out. But the real like videos that I started putting up with myself with the camera <laughs> okay. was uh, just so I'd be able to put my face out there and people wouldn't be asking me questions like why the fuck did you just call me a cunt? And my plan was only to have like the people around the area know the crack and they'd end up in the country knew the crack. <laughs> the way I'd like to do it, like to tell people about Tourette syndrome is it's like Imagine someone was lifting the ball and throwing it at your face. Your hands would you can't <laughs> your hands would naturally come up to catch the ball or you'd naturally move out of the way of the ball and you wouldn't know you were doing it. Your body just do it because that's what your body felt like it had to do. The process of getting diagnosed changed me 100% because the way doctors and stuff work with it is they need to eliminate every process, that, everything that it could have possibly been. Being diagnosed and like classes like this is what it is actually helps. You know, because then you know what's up. You can talk to other people that have, can't <laughs> have the same sort of issues. Um, you have other people to relate to in that sense. I was 16, I'm 23 now. Seven years since I had my first tick. One of the big things I need to overcome with my Tourette syndrome is getting over embarrassment because of my ticks. Like whenever I'm on a train, like on the way down here, and people are looking at me a bit different, or someone sits across from me and then I'm sitting there going, oh no, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And then it happens. Realistically, they didn't even care, but I'm ashamed with it within myself because it's something I can't control. All anybody ever wants is control over their life and we control over what happens with them. And at times I don't have it. And I, I'm ashamed of that. The biggest impact on my mental health is whenever I let myself go in that sense. I go out drinking, I go out smoking, I hang out with the wrong crowds. Uh, I like old looking after my body because essentially I don't care about myself. Whereas whenever I care about myself, my mental health feels better. I've had multiple challenges, 100%. I, I lost my mum whenever I was 11. I lost my dad whenever I was 20. My dad, he fought cancer in front of my eyes. Within that three month period, I lost my bird, broke up with my girlfriend for three years. And again, I went off the rails because of that. I went through psychosis because of smoking marijuana. And literally lost my mind to the point where I didn't know who I was anymore. Because of psychosis, I, I got that third diagnosis. Um, with Tourette syndrome, you also have other brain disorder type things, but within that is depression. Um, it's a very common side effect with my brain disorder. And it's up and down. And grieving really does hit everybody differently, but it's there and you need to deal with it instead of trying to numb it. And that's something I tried to do for a long time was numb it with, with the likes of weed, with the likes of alcohol. Uh, I really tried to, to completely take all my emotional side away. And it can't fuck it, hey, it does, it didn't, hey, fuck it. it didn't fix anything. It just caused more problems and hurt me as well as the people that I love because they can understand me anymore. Eventually, after I got hospitalized, because I went through psychosis because of the weed, <laughs> I had to then deal with my grief. And like, I miss my parents every day. Uh, I love my mum and I love my dad. And I know one day, uh, God will and I will see them again. And I can do nothing but try to enjoy every day as if they were here, because that's what they would want for me. But him as well, see, whenever it comes to mental health, like I can't express the responsibility of a pet. Like that really does give you reason and purpose. So like, without scruff my mental health, it'd probably be downhill as well. Martial arts training and competing side of things really gives me something to look forward to outside of the social media, outside of every day to day life, you know? And I feel like everybody can benefit mental health wise if they compete and learn how to use their body in some sort of physical way. Martial arts is the way I've picked it, mate. That's my poison, I've chosen up. Uh, football, mate, uh, you got that there, you got cricket, but none of that there interests me, mate. <laughs> My greatest achievement? Waking up this morning. Waking up yesterday. Planning and waking up tomorrow is my greatest achievement. Yeah, I'm trying to make the best every day. If you're going through mental health problems, you need to talk. Talk to the people around you. Talk to a doctor. Talk to anybody that's willing to listen. But you can't just get over it by talking you need to do as well so whenever someone gives you a bit of advice on right well if you're feeling down you need to cut these things out of your life and start focusing on things that's going to make you more of a positive person and bring positive influence into your life you need to take that on board you can't just hear it you have to do it you know being happy is a struggle and it's hard fucking work 
but where else would you rather put in your work than being happy? For me, it's the gym. That's that's my place of positivity. There's no time I've ever walked into a martial arts gym and came out feeling worse than what I went in. I've literally have had hematomas on my knee, you know what I mean? And still left the gym feeling better up here than what I did before I went. So uh, that, that for me is my positivity day to day life.